Welcome back to another episode of B2B Growth. Uh, today is going to be a little bit different. We're not interviewing a CEO or VP of marketing in a fast-growing B2B company today. Instead, uh, we are doing, uh, we're just going to have a conversation with Logan Lyles and myself. If you did not listen to Friday's episode of B2B Growth, we announced that we hired Logan on as our very first sales hire at Sweetfish. And so he flew this weekend from Colorado Springs to Orlando to hang out with our team to really kick off, you know, him him coming on board full time with us. And as we were kind of getting up up to speed on Saturday, we were talking with the team about some things that we're we've been uh adjusting with our process and and how we work with our clients, uh, something struck Logan uh, and he thought, man, we should do a B2B growth episode about this. So uh, I am going to I'm going to have Logan explain you know, what it is that we talked about and then we elaborate on it a bit and hopefully it adds value for you. Yeah, so we've been doing a weekend here of me joining the team and getting to know everybody, and we've been going through a lot of strategy. I've been asking a lot of questions to learn how we do things, how we onboard customers, all that sort of stuff. And so it's been a lot of good information for me to hear um, what the processes are. And so we were sitting down for coffee, and um, James, Johnny, and I, and Ryan on the team, who's very involved in our customers launching their new podcasts and um, going through the process of uh, the first couple of episodes and getting them going and all that sort of stuff. And we talked about this this one minor thing, um, a customer that had some issues you, using another uh, meeting conference uh, tool than what we had recommended. And we really just touched on, hey, there are reasons why we've chosen which audio tool we use for our for uh, B2B growth and for our customers uh, to record their podcasts on. And that's come through some trial and error. And we talked about the fact that we not only need to let our customers know from our experience, this is the best tool for this area, or this is the best way to handle this process. Um, but we need to explain the process by which we settled on that or why we do that. And that can have a big impact on the adoption of that process or some part of maybe your software, something like that. Yeah. So we actually had a piece of feedback from a new customer of, of, I guess it was about a month or so ago. And he, bas- he, he told me, he said, James, y- your team is great at the what, executing the service that you guys have designed, they're phenomenal at. He said, but what I've struggled with in, in working with you guys uh, throughout the launch of the show is understanding the why behind things. And, and so it was, it was such a helpful piece of feedback because we were, we were, we were great at the what, you know, after, after producing podcasts, uh, as many podcasts as we've produced for the last two and a half years, we know a thing or two about it and and we are constantly perfecting the process. But we weren't telling our new customers why they were doing certain things. And in this example, we use Uber Conference to to host all of our podcast interviews and we're, we're a big advocate for it, not because we're affiliate of the program, but because there are very specific elements about Uber Conference that make it very easy uh, to, to go a little bit deeper just so you understand more context. With Uber Conference, you don't have, you're not forcing your guest to download uh, an, an extra piece of software to their computer. So like Zoom or, uh, or what's another one, WebEx, um, tools like that require, would require your guest to download a piece of software onto their laptop before getting on to an interview with you. And with our strategy, the way we deploy this strategy, we're, we're, wanting our clients to ask their ideal clients, their potential referral partners to be a guest on the show. And because you want to main, you want to make that, that relationship is really powerful for you. So you want to make it as easy as possible for that person to jump on, do the interview and look like a rock star. And so Uber conference makes it the easiest because the guest can call in, they can click a link. Um, and when we explain the why behind that to a new customer, it makes perfect sense. Oh, of course we want to make it as easy as possible for our guests. But if we don't explain the why, 
then they're just thinking, oh, well, we use Zoom or, oh, we use WebEx. We can just we can just use those other tools because we're not adequately explaining the why behind us choosing that particular tool. I say all this to say, and Logan and I are talking about this today, because so many of you listening to this, whether you have a SaaS product that has a certain element of service that goes along with it, maybe professional services that, that you're selling on top of, of your SaaS product, or it's... Uh, it's it's the why behind your customers actually seeing success with your SaaS tool. Um, explaining the why behind your users or your customers needing to do a certain thing a certain way is extremely important so that they actually adopt the learnings that you've learned over the course of time that you've been uh, executing in your business. And so for us, we know all of this stuff about podcasts. We know what works. We know what questions work during podcast interviews. We know the process of, you know, what emails we need to send when to get someone to agree to be a guest on a show. We know all of these things and we were great at the executing of those things on behalf of our clients. We were not great at explaining to our clients why all of these things were happening and so there was a lot of confusion on our clients on the on the part of our clients to say okay well we we don't really need to use this tool or should we send emails a different way uh, because we, we weren't doing a great job of explaining it. And so by introducing some things now, videos at certain points during our onboarding processes, adding in, you know, a phone, an extra phone conversation with our account manager where he ex, you know, specifically explains certain parts of our process and the why behind it, we've already noticed in the last month, month and a half, uh, a significant uh, uptick in uh, in an adoption to people adhering to our process the way we've defined it. And we actually just had a kickoff call last week where at the end of the call, the the customer said, man, you guys have such an incredible onboarding process. I feel like I know, you know, exactly what's going on and what's going to happen. And that was music to my soul because we took that feedback from a customer from a month, month and a half ago. We, we applied it very quickly within that week, really within the next two days, and we're already seeing results as, as a result of, uh, of baking that why. Like, why do you do the certain, why, why did you add a certain feature to your product? Why is there a certain piece of your service that gets executed the way it's executed? Explaining that in a way that's not overwhelming to the customer, obviously sending them a 15 minute video explaining the why probably isn't gonna cut it. Uh, but if it's maybe a, a, a one line email in, in a sequence of emails that they're getting throughout onboarding, or it's added into a, a part of a conversation that one of your customer success reps is already planning on having once they've been on board, you know, in your product for two weeks, whatever the case may be, pay attention to explaining the why. It has certainly helped us, and I think it can help you too. Thank you so much. I hope you have a fantastic holiday week. If you are here in the States, it is 4th of July this week. Have a fantastic holiday week, and we will talk to you soon.